Well, hello everybody. This is going to be a tutorial on how to set up an SSD cache on your Synology NAS using two and a half inch SSDs. Synology allows you to use two and a half inch SSDs instead of three and a half inch hard drives in your bays. That means instead of putting a standard hard drive in your bay, you can instead put a very fast SSD. They will generally have lower capacities, however they will have much higher random read and write speeds. This is actually why SSD caching is used. Basically what you're doing is you're taking your most accessed files and putting them on a very fast SSD. Then whenever you're going to find anything, first your Synology looks in the SSD cache for any of the files you're requesting. If they're in there, it will simply send that instead of going to the hard drive. This is especially helpful when you're running virtual machines or if you have more than four users trying to hit the NAS at the same time. That's because if you're trying to transfer a bunch of different files from a bunch of different locations to different computers, the hard drive disk spindle will have to be going back and forth following each of those bays. But instead, if they're already on the SSD, it can access them almost instantaneously. There are two parts to SSD caching. There is read and write, or just read. I'll go into it a bit more in later on, but basically, read write allows you to speed up your write caching. However, it takes redundancy, so you need to be in at least RAID 1. Whereas read-only cache, you only need one SSD and you don't require any redundancy. That's because if both SSDs fail, it doesn't matter because all the data is already on your NAS. So without further ado, first you're going to want to power down your NAS and unplug it so you can access it easily. First select which hard drive bays you would like to use. Then depress the bottom of them to unlock them and remove them. From the caddy, you will have to remove the bottom panel, otherwise the drive will not fit. Next, take the four screws and screw the two and a half inch SSD into the caddy. Being sure that the gold conducting tips are facing inward. Now that you've installed the 2.5 inch SSDs into the drive caddies, return them into your Synology NAS. Be sure to click the bottom to ensure that it locks, and use the optional key if you'd like the added security. Now that we've installed our 2.5 inch SSDs and rebooted it, we're now going to log into DSM. And first we're going to go over to Storage Monitor. As you can see, we've got two unused hard drives right here. Those are our two SSDs. And from there, it's very simple to use. We're going to go to SSD cache and simply create one. This is where we've got the option to either use a read write cache or a read only cache. A read only cache is going to speed up reads from your Synology. A read write cache is going to actually speed up both in some ways. Say you've got multiple people trying to write a file to your Synology. It's slowing down because there's too many people trying to write to it and the spindle head can only move so quickly. What if instead some of those people's files could be written into the SSD? That's what read write cache is. Basically what you do is you write some files in when needed into the SSD cache. Then, once demand goes down, the SSD cache automatically puts the files back on the hard drives. This is awesome, except for the fact that it adds in the possibility of data loss. Because if those SSDs fail, while they've got your data on there, and it's not reached your hard drives yet, then you've lost that data. This is why you require at least one redundant drive when using read-write cache. Another thing I would recommend doing if you're going to set up a read-write cache is to also have a UPS with your Synology. That's an uninterrupted battery supply. Basically what this does is if your power is cut to your house, it allows your Synology to boot down safely by supplying enough backup power. The reason for this is some people have reported that using a read-write cache, their volume crashed with unexpected power loss. This meant that they did not necessarily lose everything, they simply had to SSH into their Synology, but they did lose some data.
and that is not something you want to be doing. All right, for this, I'm just going to be using a read only cache. That's because generally I use virtual machines and do not have a ton of people trying to write data all at the same time. So we select that and now we go into and select which SSDs we want to use. I'm going to use both of them just because they're in there. Now it begs the question about how much storage you want. Well, why wouldn't you want all of it? It happens so that every single gigabyte of SSD storage, the file location has to be stored in RAM. So that means for one gigabyte of SSD storage, you require 416K of system memory. That means that your RAM will use 416K for every one gig of SSD cache you have. So for my 931 gigs of SSD cache, I'm actually using a fairly substantial 378 megabytes of RAM. And now just simply go in and it's going to erase them. This process is going to take a really long time to do because it does not want to ruin your system. All right, now that the SSD cache has been created and mounted, we can actually go through and configure some settings. The first one is simply whether or not we want to skip sequential IO. This basically means that if you're trying to read one long file from your Synology, it's not going to write that to the SSD. This is done to save the SSD's lifespan. One thing that differs between SSDs and hard drives is the lifespan of the SSD is directly linked to how many times you write data to it. Basically, every single time you're writing data to an SSD, the charge cells that use to store the data get a little bit harder to read from the next time. Under normal use, this is hundreds of times you can overwrite an SSD over and over and over again. However, in an SSD cache, you could easily achieve that, especially if you're writing se massive sequential files to the SSD that are not going to be used again. So by default, Synology has you not write the sequential files to the SSD, but instead use the SSD cache for smaller files and for random read and write specifically. That's really the best part about what a SSD cache can do for you is to allow you to grab just the little parts so the hard drive spindle does not have to grab random pieces across everywhere. Next up, we can actually see the performance of the SSD by clicking on it. Right now, I'm not hitting anything to the drive and I'm getting about, well, negligible for performance. Really where it's going to stand out is when you're running virtual machines, as well as when you've got a lot of people working in office together. Personally, I actually don't normally use an SSD cache because from what I've seen, I've actually gotten no significant speed increases, actually some speed decreases because it's got a first look in the SSD for files because generally what I'm storing on my NAS is a bunch of large files that I'm going to pull maybe once. It's really more for archival than anything else. So in terms of setting up an SSD cache, we're now done. Now I'm going to show you how to remove one if you want to in the future. It's just as easy. You click remove. It's going to make sure that you've got all your virtual machines powered down because otherwise they will fail. And once again, it will take a while and go through a bunch of cycles. And here you've actually got to enter your DSM password to continue. Alright, so now we're going to get the same interrupts that we got earlier on, but it will remove the SSD cache. Since I chose a read-only cache, there's nothing to worry about if I want to just pull out the SSDs right now, but for simply sake, I'm going to let it fully unmount everything before we're trying to remove them. If you are using the read-write cache, make sure to always, always, always uninstall the SSD cache before removing any hard drives. This is because these are live drives. These are drives that are actually have data that is not contained on the rest of your system. And so losing them, you would have data loss.
All right, well, thanks for watching my video. Let me know what you think in the comments below or any other tutorials you'd like to be made. Bye.